Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our uh, Tips and Tricks web webinar. Sorry. Um, today's topic is Health Checkpoint uh, Overview and Demo. Uh, with us today presenting is an SE from Maryland, David Hansen. David, floor is yours. Cool, Rob. Thanks. Uh, hello. Welcome to everyone for joining today. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to, to take a look at this HCP overview. Rob does not lie. I am Dave Hansen. I am an SE covering strategic accounts in Maryland. I've been with Checkpoint for a little more than three and a half years. Prior to coming to Checkpoint, I was a solutions architect at IBM and AT&T. Today's topic is going to be health checkpoint. It doesn't really roll off your tongue really well, so I'll probably refer to it as HCP from this point forward. Um, let's go ahead and let's just take a look at the agenda and what I'm going to cover today. Uh, intro, which I kind of just went through. Uh, we'll do a quick tool overview, just what HCP does. Um, I'll do an installation review. There's actually a manual installation and a, a smart console extension. I, I won't go through the manual installation because it's a little involved. You want to make sure you have the latest um, take of auto updater, which you have to move over via WinSCP, so on and so forth. I think we've all kind of been through that, but I will uh, run it manually just to show you what the reports look like. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do a demo, both um, the Smart Console extension and then I'll demo a manual installation. And then there's a little summary at the end. Um, we'll do q and I think, like Rob said, at the end. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. Um, what is Health Checkpoint or HCP? Um, health Checkpoint runs health tests against your environments. It, goes out, it does configuration reviews. It looks at your comp files, your regex files, um, various uh, processes, a, a lot of different things within the environment uh, that you'd, you'd wanna actually look at. Um, it provides a view at possible issues that may affect your gateways uh, that you, you don't even know about. Um, and then there's a historical overview and timeline which shows possible persistent issues. Um, there's another section within HCP called what's the story? And it provides a timeline of critical and informational events that happen on your uh, environment, on your gateways and your management servers. Um, it, it, I'll show you what it looks like, but it's, it's pretty cool. It gives you a, a, a the ability to go back in time and, and look at events. There's also charts, um, plot charts that show IDA information, traffic, concurrent connections, RAM usage, disk usage, CPU usage, processes, the amount of RAM used for processes, various things like that. And again, we can, we'll see that in the report. Um, so, HCP availability, it's available for all the products you see on the screen. I'm hoping you guys can actually see my screen, um, but it doesn't cover SMB project or products. Uh, the other thing is you can see that it's actively being developed. Uh, a release came out Monday, which should auto update to uh, your devices uh, as long as it's accessible to the internet. So, it's also installed automatically uh, or, or by default on all devices. So it's, it's already there. Um, like I said, one of the issues with manual installation is your auto updater is probably not getting updated. So you'd need to get the latest take on that. And I, I talk about that in the installation uh, information. So we'll go ahead and we'll get into uh, looking at that right now. So like I said, there's there's two ways you can use HCP. You can use it in an offline or, or manual mode. This is for uh, devices that can't get to the internet, um, say financial institutions or maybe plants, power plants, uh, things like that, that you're, you're not uh, allowing access to the internet. You don't want them on the internet. Um, involves moving latest take of auto update or over to the device. 
and then running auto update or CLI to install HCP. When it's done, it'll give you a, a valid validation it succeeded in the log. And I highlighted in the presentation where the log is, but very straightforward. Um, not much to the manual installation. Again, uh, it, it's just a little involved due to the fact that you're moving some files. The other installation is the smart console installation uh, using the smart console extension. Um, a couple of prerequisites around that would be that you need to actually run the reports or, or run the tests on the devices that you're going to, to actually look at. And then you wanna make sure you actually have HCP started on the management server. And then you actually have to run a command to, to gather the reports. So if anybody is familiar with Smart Console uh, and the extension portion of it, it's just installed on Smart Console. I actually have Danny Jung's installed too. So that covers kind of the installations. Um, again, I, it, there's not much to either one. Uh, Smart Console obviously is a lot quicker. Um, so we'll go ahead and let's go ahead and get into a real quick demo on this. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of presentation mode and we'll bring up the devices that I'm using. I'll, this is what I'm working with today. I have, a, a, these are all uh, virtual machines, but uh, I have just a straight gateway, a MAB gateway that I'm using for some testing, for some mobile access authentication. And I have a VSX server running four VSs with a virtual switch for a project I'm working on with R&D. Um, and then just a straight management server. Uh, running everything I think but IBS because it alerts. So I just turned it off for uh, the testing. So what I wanna get into was how this is run in manual mode. So we'll go ahead and I'm gonna go out and jump on my SMS server. You have to Can run make that this. a little bigger, David. Yeah, I'm going to right now. Right okay, now. thank One you. Yep, no problem. So you want to run this in expert mode. And hopefully you can see that okay. Um, you're going to go in and you run. And this is going to run the test against the environment. This is, again, against my SMC. And one thing I've, uh, you, you can't run against your management server from Smart Console. So you end up, uh, it's, I've, I've run it manually just to, to show you what you'll get here. So if after the report runs, it tells you where you can go ahead and grab it. So I just, and this, if you've used the health check uh, script, it's similar to what the format is on that. You'll see that it goes through and it checks infrastructure. It checks that it can talk to any of its objects. Again, at, this is the SMC. So it goes through and it checks connectivity to the UCs, various things like that. It goes through and checks your IOS, um, memory usage, CPU usage, user space, various things like that. So. This is a, a, I like this report. It, it's fairly detailed, uh, it runs about 10 pages. Uh, since this is on the SMC and I ran this manually, I grabbed the report and pulled it onto my desktop so I can show you what this report looks like if you have to pull it back to your desktop. So this is that same report via HTML. So right now I don't have anything funky going on with my management server, um, but fairly detailed report. Again, since this is run offline, 
I'm not getting a what's the story. I'm not getting charts, but I do get topology. And boy, isn't that interesting. Um, very, very complex environment. Right? Very complex environment. Yes. Uh, so that is how this looks via HTML. And then this is how it looks via the, the uh, gateway or looking at it directly on the, or I'm sorry, on the management server. So gateways similar. Um, you'd go in, you'd run the same reports, you run the same sessions. Um, I'll bring up my VSX gateway. So this goes out and tests all the VSs and it runs against all of those. Shows you what tests it runs. And this takes, uh, again, these aren't big VMs, um, but it doesn't take too long. Again, if you wanna see the reports that you just ran, go on here and you can look at it. Tells you how long the reports took to run or the test took to run, same type of thing, connectivity to the UC, goes out and checks RAM. Again, same type of, of tests, uh, but it does it against the VSs too. So that is uh, uh, something else that you can do to, to drill down on your VSs. If we were to look at this report again, uh, and I ran this against the VS, so I'll run a health check here. And then you'll see it's similar to the report I showed you with HTML. So uh, this is a report I ran yesterday. You'll see that it's given me a, a little bit, uh, show me a red air here, although I'm not. So what I do is I'll usually take a look at immediately you can drill down here but what it's not readily apparent until you get to there but this is a policy push issue that i have so it's kind of nice it gives you what it found and it gives you a description of what it found and it tells you this is what you need to do take a look at it so you can go in and take a look at the json file and see what your thresholds are so pretty straightforward um this is the what's the story section and this is what i was talking about where you could actually go in and see a timeline so you can go through back in time to look at things you can look at warnings you can take a look at this warning and and it gives you a little bit more description on it you could add additional items or you could actually add another section here. All right. So a little bit of, of additional information you can get with a timeline around it. The report goes back to when you built the device. So I think this one is only a couple of days old, if I remember right. Yeah. The other thing that you get with this is charts. So this is what I was talking about, um, where you'll get IDA traffic. You'll see concurrent connections, throughput, CPU usage, et cetera, uh, RAM usage, virtual memory real used. And then here's your processes. So you can actually take a look at your processes. And what's kind of nice here is you can drill down on one if you want. This is not, this is way down, so it's hard to see, but double click, it brings them all back. You double click, you want to look at FWK, you can take a look at that too. And it gives you an idea. And again, it's historical. The other thing you can do, you can see all of this stuff up here. You can draw a line. 
You can say, no, I don't like that line. I want a circle. Or I want a, you know, a free form. And then you can take a picture and send it off to somebody if you want. And the picture will be exactly like this as a PNG file. Um, so back to topology and that wonderful picture I just showed you earlier, where this kind of comes in handy is in VSX. So if you have a complex VSX environment, you'll see this gives you a little bit more detail than having to actually drill down on the devices. You can go in and take a look at it. It gives you an idea where it goes. If you're doing anti-spoofing, anything like that. It shows you the VS, which doesn't give you a lot of info, but it gives you every, all the connectivity. It shows these are all going in. Um, where VS, this is my management port. So pretty straightforward, but it's nice to have as compared to looking at trying, you know, having to drill down here to see your topology. So um, another thing about the report, and I'll go ahead and I'll run this back against the VSX. You can go ahead and you can actually grab your latest report, which is what it does when it launches, or you can run a live report. So you want to get something new. This is going to take a minute. I'm going to grab a drink of water. One second. So this is getting a live report from the device. Um, it takes a little bit of time. Um, I ran some tests against this, and I want to mention that, which is HCP isn't something you want to run when your box is under distress. Uh, you know, if it's if it's um, having performance issues, uh, HCP is not something that's you know resource intensive, um, but it is. It, it you don't want to tip your box over, um, and and you're not sure what can do that. Uh, probably the best thing would be to get your to get your environment back and then come back when you're, you can run HCP when the device is, is healthy. Um, as you'll see, I just ran this report. You see it shows my time's off, uh, my clocks are off on my environment, but it goes out, it runs a fresh report, it goes out and gets everything new. Um, uh, what's the story, timeline, again, same type of information that hasn't changed obviously since yesterday. Topology hasn't changed since yesterday. Um, let me go ahead and just make sure I covered everything. I, I think that pretty much covers what I was looking at. I, I mean, I can run this. And you'll see, I have, I have some memory issues on this map gateway. Um, so you'll see that, you know, it, it pops there. And what I was saying is it's not readily available. It gives me a red, a red indicator here, but it's not, it doesn't give me a red indicator here. Um, again, something I was going to talk to shy about, and I already know I have memory issues with this box. So I know what I need to look at here. This again is, is policy threshold. Uh, is it actually, no, this is my X, SXL. So secure XL uh, turned off. I think I have that actually in, in what's the story uh, critical. Yeah, there it is right there. So it detected that anomaly. So I believe this, I did a reboot. I think this was a reboot that I did yesterday morning. And that's why this popped up. So um, that's pretty much all I had to show with HCP. Um, I mean, in, in summary, uh, like I said, some of the things that I, you know, I wanted to get across is, you know, if you look at the SK171436, uh, which is the HCP SK, 
gives you all of this information. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It uh, covers the auto updater piece for the manual installation. Um, I didn't have any issues with it, but if you do reach out to TAC, they'll be more than happy to, to help and support you with that. Um, like I said, don't run this. It, it, it's not a, it, it's a diagnostics tool, not necessarily a debug tool. Um, so, so it, you know, best to run it when you're maybe sitting there knowing that an environment isn't under duress, or if you have an environment that is under duress, wait until you know that you can run it against it. Um, but it's, it's, uh, I, I like the tool. It, it's a good tool. It's, it's good to show, um, executives, uh, versus like the health check tool, which is the format, um, is a little bit different, a little bit, I, I don't want to say, um, busy, uh, but this one's just, I guess, prettier. So, um, that's, that's pretty much it, Rob. Um, okay. Do we have any questions or we any do. anything that we'd want to talk about? Um, I think you covered some of these. Some people did join late, but uh, you covered the performance impact there. But how about suggestion on how often or when to run this, or is it something you can schedule? I uh, so. <sighs> I've the research I've done is I haven't seen that you can schedule this. Um, I also read that it's not good to schedule health checks um, in case they pop up at the wrong time or possibly get stuck and continue to launch and not stop. Um, but yeah, I would I would run this probably once a month. Um, I would also run this if you know, like end a quarter and a month where, you know, you're going to have some additional traffic and you want to make sure that your gateways are healthy. You don't have anything going on with your gateways. Um, I, I, and, and <laughs> the suggestion would be, uh, to run it and actually do something with what you find. Um, there, you know, there's memory issues there's possibly you're running a, a a take that that needs to be updated or or something like that but it does mention that in some of the uh we found this and upgrading to the latest take which i had that i think that's what i had yesterday was uh, i actually upgraded to the latest take on r8030 um and it gave me an alert to do that right. so So uh, to be clear, this runs on gateways and management or just gateways? You can run it. So the issue, like I said, and, and I can, I'll share my screen again really quick. So what what will happen is if you were to run this on a management, and this is the, the, the actual smart console extension, you run it on management manually. But if I were to run this on management from the smart console extension, It'll air out and give me a demo file um, because it can't run against that. And I don't have a good answer for that. And that was something I actually wrote down for, for Shai to, to look at. But you can see it gives me a demo. This is not my gateway. Um, right. Maybe smart console stepping on it. and can't have Yeah, something, it's then. something stepping on it. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I said um, on management, you run it on the management server itself via the command line. And then you can, can move the files to get this, this format back to your desktop, or you can use the format that actually um, comes with that. I think it's a CSV. Yeah. So. Now, obviously you're running this in VMs here. So it does run on open server appliances. Does it run in AWS, Azure? Any I don't believe we can run this on the cloud. And that was another question I had for Shai, because I do not, see the capability of being able to run this in cloud, but my goal was to try to stand up an Azure and AWS gateway and run it against it to see what I could do. But I, I didn't get to that point, but 
that was something that I did not see in the SK that it supported AWS and Azure, but it also did not say that as a known limitation. Right. <laughs> so, so uh, maybe it's something they're working on. Right. I, and this is a tool that's constantly being upgraded and functionalities added. So I'm sure that's on the roadmap for it. That's exactly right. Um, like I said, I think uh, there was a release in December. I'd have to go back and look at the takes, but um, then there was an, another release on Monday and it gets auto updated via auto updater. All right. Yeah. That was my next question. So you don't have to manually update it. It'll you do not. Right. Yep. Should be auto update via auto updater. Um, supported versions. Is this any backward compatible or just the currently supported versions? Uh, backwards compatible as in it runs R8010 and up. Uh, okay. I yeah. I don't think... I know R8010 is no longer supported, but I think it still runs on R8010 if you need it. Okay. Um, does the HCP service automatically run or survive a reboot? It does. But uh, if I'm going to run a report, I go in and you can validate if the service is, is running or not by running a, a status on it. Yep. Um, but I did, it, I did a reboot just to validate that. Okay, great. Just look through here. I know some of these were duplicates. Uh, I did see it does run on MDM, right? There's no issue. Yep. With... Should be no issues on MDM. And uh, standalone or distributed installs. You can yep. run those. Okay. Uh, supported versions and performance impact. Yep. I think we have it covered, David. Um, cool. So, okay, great. Thank you for that information. You know, more detailed, powerful tool to validate your environment. Um, so please everyone take a look at this, kick the tires on it and let us know what you think. Like we said, we have direct line to R&D. So you have suggestions on this tool, um, let us know. You know, we'll push it up to the right people and it's constantly being updated. So we wanna make it as usable and uh, uh, user-friendly as possible. So please let us know, talk to your SC or just reach out to me or David directly. Perfect. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out uh, Rob, and I forgot about it. You actually can provide feedback. This goes right back to the team for the tool. Oh, there you go. So, All right. So David just said, don't bother him. Go right to the team. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't find this button, please bother me. I have oh, no showed it to you. So <laughs> thank you very much, everybody today. I appreciate your time. Again, I know you're all busy and this is a crazy time right now. I hope everybody's doing well, uh, staying safe. So thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, we'll uh, set up follow-up email with any reference content and the recording link for this session. Our next webinar will be in two weeks. You'll see the invitation for that soon. With that, I'll give you back your day. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you here next time. Thanks, Great. David. Thanks. Bye.